there's going to be a new number one in Division One women's basketball. It's because number one LSU women's basketball lost to number 20 Colorado. This is the second time in program history that Colorado's ever defeated a number one team in the country in, in women's basketball. And the first one was back in 2020, 2021 against Stanford, believe it or not. And I did say when this game was released back in the summer, this was a dangerous game because Colorado brought back so much talent. And I get LSU has a lot of talent too, but returning production. And the final score for tonight was 92 to 78. So what exactly happened in this game? What's crazy is LSU had a little bit of a lead by only six, six points. And Colorado I to responded back immediately. I mean, at halftime, Colorado was up. 38 to 32. In the third quarter, Colorado scored 25 points while LSU scored 19. But then in the fourth, Colorado scored 29 points. LSU scored 27. So neither team was playing defense. And at one point during this game, believe it or not, Colorado was up 22 points. What can I say? You don't get stops. You don't win the game. And you can't score. Uh, sure, you could score as much as you want, but defense matters. I mean, first of all, defensively for LSU, Colorado shot 53.2% from the field on 62 attempts, 43.5% on threes out of 23 attempts, and they made 10 threes. That's a strength for Colorado, including seven of them came from one player. Keep that in mind. They were two, like 66.7% from the free throw line on 24 attempts. Could be better. And they had 37 rebounds. None of those offensive. They had 24 assists, 11 steals, three blocks. They had 21 turnovers. And still somehow they won this game in 26 fouls. And they only had nine points off the bench. But it didn't matter. Even though LSU scored, look at this, 20, 21, 23 points off the bench, it didn't matter. Because LSU was not taking care of the ball, as you could tell by the numbers when I get to it. Like 43.9% from the field on 66 attempts, 40% on three, but that's on 10 attempts. Colorado's a three point shooting team. LSU is a Necessarily, I know LSU had one player with two of them, and it's in Haley Van Lip. I get it. They made only 66.7% on free throws as well in 24 attempts. So, really, they didn't help themselves at the free throw line either. And they had 39 rebounds, and 13 of those were on offensive side of things. They only had 13 assists. You got 13 assists on 29 made shots. That's not a good recipe for winning a game either and six steals they had six blocks though so i give them that edge on that but 19 turnovers both teams need to work on their turnovers going forward and lsu had 20 fouls so needless to say both these teams need to improve some and the turnovers and the fouling and now Colorado is 1-0 and LSU is 0-1. The question is how much will LSU fall? Because let's be clear, when you look at that non-conference slate for them going forward, it is Cupcake City for the most part. I'm just telling the truth. I mean, you got... Q-U-O-C, which stands for Queens. Then Mississippi Valley State. You got Kent State. You got Southeast Louisiana, Texas Southern. 
that's just naming some of those next games and not Niagara. Virginia. Virginia should be improved, but I don't know about NCAA tournament worthy. And you even play a top number eight, currently number eight Virginia Tech team that you played in a Final Four against. And that's at home, luckily. So I'm just going to say this point blank in the face and without even mentioning what the non-conference slate is in December for LSU here. You cannot afford another good loss, so to speak. Not just in the non-conference, but in conference. You don't have a lot of good NCAA tournament resume wins left. I mean, now, I mean, quality wins. You, you don't have a ton of those, and losing would hurt your seeding going forward. I mean, obviously, if you lose to Virginia Tech, too, in the non-con, but win everything else, that's going to hurt your seeding right away. And your strength of schedule is one of the worst in the country. And I don't get it for a coach that is Hall of Fame type. And yeah, I'm saying that because it's the truth. And it's coming from somebody who knows her. And I even know her, both of her kids. Yeah. I'm just telling the truth. And... I'm sorry to McKenzie Fuller and Kramer Robertson, but it, the truth is, when you look at the schedule, it's cupcakes. So that's that on LSU side of things. In Colorado, you got yourself a good NCAA tournament resume boosting win, but I know when you look look at the schedule I know it's not as good either with no more ranked uh, they do have to deal with U uh, uh, Utah in the Pac-12 but you first game in the conference but you get the point now they got SMU at SMU is now going to be an easy game they should be good there should be a good team this year and improve. Like, they got the Lemoyne next, Colorado does. They have Oklahoma State. That was an NCAA tournament team. So, at least they're going to get battle-tested by a future conference mate. Because, remember, Colorado is face will join the Big 12 next year. And like I said, SMU, and they're even going to play Cincinnati, a future conference mate as well. Then, it got play Kentucky than NC State. NC State was an NCAA tournament team last year. So they at least have more quality competition when compared to LSU in terms of NCAA tournament teams. Then they got Boston University. And granted, I don't know every team that made the NCAA. I can't recall every team that made the NCAA last year, but I just know those specific ones because it's fact. And all this, and that's just the rest of the month here. And I, of course, both these teams cannot overlook any particular opponent going forward, and especially for LSU side of things. Because if you lose one of those games as a cupcake game, you're screwed for the NCAA tournament seating. And even South Carolina looked really good today against the top ten Nordan, and I get. Nordane did not have Olivia Miles, but they dominated a top 10 team. So you can't tell me it's definitely they're going to win the SEC. It's still going to be a challenge because you got to deal with South Carolina still. You got to deal with Miss, I mean, Old Miss, I mean, Tennessee, then Old Miss and Mississippi State potentially. And probably it's more like a three-team race between, I mean, LSU, I mean, and the SEC, like LSU, South Carolina, and Tennessee, and maybe Ole Miss as well, a four-team race. Because Mississippi State's like number 25, but you know, you can't sleep on them. So. That's the whole thing. And in Colorado, of course, 
the Pac-12 is in a in its last year, and, and they have like like I said, Utah. They got Stanford, Washington State, USC, and UCLA. Okay, one, two, three, four other teams that's currently ranked. Too, so they're good conferences for sure. But this was massive. Whoever got this game to boost your NCAA tournament resume, and this definitely puts a little bit of hurt on LSU because, like I said, like it's the strength of schedule. They do, cannot afford another good loss. I mean, even if they just win, win those other games that they're supposed to win and lose to Virginia Tech, like I said, they're in trouble for the NCAA tournament seeding. They would be. I mean, in terms of the non-conference, and it's early on in the year, too. And I get it's game one, but still. It, question, well, two questions. How far will LSU drop after this game? And yes, I get they play two more games between now and the next poll, but those two games are cupcakes. So you can't take anything away. And how far will Colorado move up? They have to be top 15 now, in my opinion. They're that good. And I knew Colorado was a good team. They went to the Sweet 16 last year. Remember, guys. And really, LSU's run could have been taken short from that national title from a year ago to a Sweet 16 if Utah doesn't make or all those missiles free throws. But I still get credit where credit's due because they won a national title, and that's not easy to do. And they even defeated Virginia Tech and Iowa. So I'm just... Pushing, putting that out there, and I'm not gonna say they're gonna fall. They were going to fall in lead eight. Yeah, they were not gonna fall in lead eight. Who, who they played at the time? No, it's more like. But you get the whole point. So, anyways, if you like this content, like and subscribe, and see you guys later on the road to 600 subscribers. Of course, ultimately goals a thousand or more. So I make money off this. Of course, liking the video, commenting the video, really helps the YouTube algorithm, and so more people could see. Of course, sharing the video does help too. And if you're watching, I appreciate it. Of course, if you're watching and not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's free. And hit the notification bell as well. And this is just a massive upset. And there will be more upsets along the way. And it's only day one here. And there's already been two of them upsets today. And that's pretty much it for day one. Because all the games have already completed by now. So, yeah.